today I am here to have a little chat with someone that we've found on Instagram. I know she's also on TikTok and it's the absolutely fabulous my sassibility Haley. Hi Haley. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Could you, for people who don't know who you are, could you just start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? I'm Hayley. Um, yes, my handle on Instagram um, and on TikTok is uh, my sassibility. Um, I call myself Hayley Sassibility. Um, purely because I just want to get the word sassibility out there um, because I have a disability, which all we, you all know is multiple sclerosis. But I've turned it to SAS and my SAS shines through over my disability. Um, and I'm a 36 year old mum of one and I've had multiple sclerosis for 23 years this year. Were you diagnosed really young then? Yes, I was diagnosed at the age of 13. Um, well, I officially got, I started getting ill at the age of 13 and then it was kind of just after my 14th birthday, I was then actually officially diagnosed with um, rapidly evolving severe relapse remitting MS. That's a mouthful, that one. <laughs> yeah, but that, it's just MS. It's yeah. MS. Whatever you call it, it's MS. So, yeah. This is, <laughs> this is true. So how was that? I mean, obviously, that must have been super hard. When you're a teenager, you go through with so much stuff anyway, hormones and school and whatnot. I mean, how how was that? It was incredibly challenging, um, but it was very rapid. Um, I literally woke up with severe pins and needles in my feet um, and these pins and needles just didn't go away. And I went to school and carried on my daily life. And anyway, within the space of a couple of days, they travelled up my legs um, and they travelled up so far. Within a week, I was then admitted into intensive care because um, I was paralysed basically from the neck down and my lungs had stopped working. Um, so I lost function of everything um, and it was all in one go. So um, I was being assisted to breathe in intensive care. And then I spent a solid four months in hospital Um Obviously, the, the teams were trying to establish what was going wrong. And at first, my diagnosis was transverse myelitis. Mm -hmm. um, but I relapsed again. And through the lung punctures and MRI scans, they could see it was a very rapidly evolving, quick succession of multiple sclerosis that was happening to me. Um, and yes I was a teenager but I just didn't know what was going on I was in hospital mm. and all I wanted to do was be well and, and get out of there but yes. not knowing what was ahead of me <laughs> no I mean once they've sort of said it was MS what, what what support did you get did you do you sort of did they start you on any treatment because you were so young um I was on all I remember from the time I just was pumped up with steroids as mm. far as I could know actually in hospital I put on a lot of weight um but obviously that's steroid weight and everything mm. else and um the support I got I didn't I didn't back then that was in year 2000 so as much as I remember it was mainly my my mom and my family that were my support network I didn't I didn't feel, other than obviously the doctors and nurses, I didn't know there was other networks out there that could mm. support me. Um, we were just trying to get my myself well. And my focus then was just to learn to walk again. But I didn't know whether I was able, was going to be able to walk again. Um, I thought then my life was just going to be just a wheelchair user mm. from then on. Um and obviously everything that came with that, you know, my 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 family were upset. My my I was upset. Everybody was everybody was upset. But mm. as a teenager, weirdly, I all I wanted to do was get back to school and yeah. and literally just walk again. And I felt I could I I felt I could walk again. I felt no, I got a minute. I need to I need to start doing. I think started coming back and they did, and things started to get back to a normal. Mm. And I learned to walk again um went back to school and then carried on my life but then relapsed again quite quickly within that year um and then yeah the official diagnosis was the multiple sclerosis did you manage to to get back to school eventually then or, or yes. yeah so I did I I ended I ended um 
I did. I, I got back to school. Um, I got myself out of the wheelchair and I went to school on crutches and I just continued on crutches for as long as possible. And then eventually weaned myself off crutches. I was back walking again. Um, so yeah, I did. I felt like I was just going to be normal, but I just, took, I think, I think looking back then, it was kind of like, oh, well, that's, that's done with now, you yeah. know, I just need to focus on school. So yeah. in a way, when you're, when you've got that naivety as a teenager, you just yeah. carry on, don't you? Mm. Um, and then I just, then when problems started again, as in optic neuritis, you know, waking up, not being able to see out of my left eye and, the fatigue was getting to me when I was at school and then the cramps and, you know, I say kind of semi-paralysis again because it wasn't full-on paralysis. It was like semi, you know, I couldn't really get my legs to function properly, but they mm. were functioning. Um, I just dealt with them as and when. And then um, my MS nurses, they were quite good, you know, as and when I did have a problem, it was like, right, we need to go and get you steroids again. You need to come in. We need to do intravenous methyl prednisolone and all that crack so uh yeah um I was walking again but just dealing with problems along the way <laughs> yeah what was it like being in school at the time I mean what were the kids like we, we know kids can be not always the kindest to each other but <laughs> no um see I suffered with bullying throughout school anyway even before I got ill um I was bullied quite a bit actually um and then when I went back to school, it kind of, <laughs> when they could see I was on crutches and what have you, things didn't really, nothing I felt like was said or anything. But then when I looked normal again, mm. um, yeah, my bullies just came back at me. And that's, mm. that's, but that wasn't because of my condition or anything. It was just because of me. Yeah. So yeah, I was bullied all through high school, which wasn't pleasant, but Hey ho, you just have to get on and deal with it, don't you? And I managed to, I managed to deal with it on top of MS. I don't yeah. know. I just, I didn't, I didn't enjoy high school very much. I just couldn't wait to leave. And once you were out of school, how how did sort of life and MS happen? Move on then. So it moved on. Um, I went to college for a few months, but I wanted to work, so um, I just got out into the working world and started to work. And then each thing as a normal teenager, you progress and aim towards. So like learning to drive a car and, you know, saving up for, well, going out at the weekend and stuff like that. So MS, in a, in in retrospect, didn't bother me as much sort of back then I felt like I could I could do anything I felt I was back to normal again and I was it kind of let me build up my strength again um I remember feeling tired and the exhaustion mm. but I just kept going like I don't know what it whether it was adrenaline or just going out with my friends or what but I, I did keep going but I did have my relapses up and you know up until the age of 22-ish roughly and I was then on different DMTs so I started on Rebif, um, the self-injections and then Capaxone self-injections and I was doing all this um, but still I was getting relapses I mm. still things are still not um, still not sort of slowing down yeah. so uh, it was a turbulent time with regard to my health but I did just try and carry on the best way I could um and yet yeah, using crutches now and again when I needed to but then when I was poorly I would just stay in the house like I didn't mm. I, I couldn't feel like I could actually get out and about you know um so I suppose back then I would probably lock myself away a bit more if I was not feeling particularly great not because I don't know not because I was a well I think my mum, my mum, because I remember my mum saying, like, even even when she wanted to take photos or whatever with family events or anything like that, she never really wanted. I I always used to say I never really wanted any pictures of me in my wheelchair. Mm. So I actually have no pictures of me sort of back then yeah. using mobility aids or my wheelchair or anything. Yeah, because I suppose the stigma was more back then. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and maybe it's still now. Whereas now I've turned on its head. It's like, I'm just like, I need I need this stuff. So if you want to see me out and about, and if you want to be my friend and we want to go out, then I have to bring all this stuff with me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so. What do you think 
made that change from sort of really not wanting to to go out and and and, and show any show that you having to use mobility aids to like really doing what you're doing on social media now well I'll, when i started tai sabre um that was a brilliant infusion for me it really was because when i started that I now know, knowing how I've been the past year or so, I now know how much Tai Sabri protected me in both relapse rate and also actually my symptoms. Mm. I always used to think that Tai Sabri didn't protect me from symptoms because I still had bits of things going on, you know, it was like yeah. the fatigue or, or what have you, but my mobility was far better. I was, I was, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't eat, you'd look at me and you wouldn't even think there was a thing wrong with me. And that's what MS can be like for a lot of people. And that's how it was for me. Mm. You know, I had a disability, but I didn't think I had a disability. And yet I looked so normal. It's invisible. Um, so I literally, I did in all honesty, carry on my life as best way I could over the past uh, like 14 years but when I was unwell or when I was fatigued or tired I still did lock myself away because I couldn't get out um, and where I live as well I live out in the countryside here and I've been here for a good um, 12 years so it's more difficult actually to get out and about places and, and driving and stuff so if I needed to get to the shops it's you know a six mile drive and stuff mm -hmm. so if I'm unwell and my legs are not feeling great I won't drive so then I keep myself in yeah um but now it's changed and it's changed dramatically in the past year because when I had my relapse last year um my right side is a lot worse now um my speech has gone a bit funny and my fatigue levels have actually shot through the roof I can't believe how how much I've changed but I've changed DMTs as well um and maybe that's got a bit of a change I had a bit of an effect on me and because of my personality and the way I am I just thought no I refuse to stay in I I I, I will get my wheelchair back out and I will get all my you know I had minging crutches and I was using them but I was using mainly the wheelchair through mm. my last relapse and my mum flew over because they live in Manchester and I live in I actually live in Northern Ireland. So my mum flew over to help me. Um, and, you know, everybody around me was trying to help me as well. Just get out. And I got my wheelchair and um, it was a bog standard, not very aesthetically pleasing, heavy, cumbersome wheelchair. Mm. And I decided to make it look as pretty as I possibly could. And I upcycled it and put glitter all over the bits that I could get glitter onto, change the cushions and make it look really glamorous. Because I thought, no, I still want to remain me and I yeah. still want to, you know, look nice, look good. So for me, I thought, well, I'm using this chair and I'm making it look pretty. So I need this chair and I'm using it. Um, so yeah, for me now that has totally changed because it's, 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 it's why should I have to stay in the house? Why should I have to lock myself away? Why should I, on the days I feel gr well, great or better, mm. then I'll use my chair. I'll get out there and get, you know, just enjoy life. Um, I do have an electric chair as well because I, I suffer with weakness in my right arm quite a bit as well. So, you know, when I'm using my wheelchair, it, it can be, it can uh, cause problems with, my right arm so I have an electric one as well and that's amazing you know or just use a mobility scooter it just takes pressure off me yeah you know um and then my crutches and my walking sticks they're glamorous too so I've got leopard print crutches and I've got a sparkly black walking stick so mobility aids are now just my accessories yeah. I just see them as my accessories now <laughs> So that do you think actually thinking of it like that helps a bit? Yeah. Oh, totally, totally. I'm conscious. I I've actually chosen my next wheelchair, my new wheelchair, which is um it's still delayed, but my next wheelchair um is gonna is is gonna be a lightweight fixed frame one, so I can get it easier in and out of my car um and what have you. And I was so conscious about what color I chose because I kept thinking I don't want it to clash with my outfits. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was going to go for a pink one. And I was like, no, but if we've got a pink one and I want to wear, you know, certain different colours, that's just going to clash. So. <laughs> Somebody needs to invent like a color changing so you could just like push a button and then it would go, you know. Yeah. So color. I just, I, yeah, I've, I've gone, I've gone just for more of a, a plain, a wheelchair. But it, I, the decision on it was because I didn't want it to clash with certain outfits. And I want also as many different colored uh, pairs of crutches and walking sticks as I possibly can because. With MS, we all know, well, for me, my MS is very dynamic. It's very much all over the place. Mm. Yes, I use my wheelchair daily, you know, out and about and doing shopping and stuff. I will use my wheelchair because it saves my leg. If I overwork my leg as, you know, so walking or, you know, trying to get up and down the stairs and stuff, it goes dead. It just stops. It, it just, you do feel like a switch has just been set off, you mm. know, and... I, I want to stay on my feet for as long as possible, yeah. but my body can't do what I want it to do. And so therefore, I've accepted the fact that, okay, I will just sit down, give myself a break and continue my life using a wheelchair or my crutches or my stick. I will use what I need on the day basically let's have a little <laughs> chat about your or um your social media because you're very active on, on on social media that's how we found you um oh. <laughs> what messages are you trying to sort of get out on social media well one is to educate a little bit more about ms um uh two and two is because i use mobility aids and because i am a wheelchair user I very much am very vocal about trying to change perceptions of how people are viewed when you have a disability. Um, so for me, um, it's a case of I will still remain me as much as possible using my mobility aid. But the other thing is that I found that I'm also quite vocal about is access into places. Mm. So for me, when I, I put out posts that do say, if if we are not seen, we are not heard. For me, that, that, that meaning is, if I'm not seen out in society using my wheelchair, then people like myself, my, me my needs won't be met. My need to access a shop, my need to freely, you know, manoeuvre myself around, up and down streets and high streets and whatnot they're not going to be heard so I think the more more of us that are wheelchair users and that are mobility aid users the more we just go out and enjoy life as best we can the more our voices will be heard with regard to access into a lot of places um and for me as well the way the world is is media plays a massive part in that it's it's massive you know every we see hundreds and hundreds of images on the internet and on the tv and i want to be represented so the, so it all is swings and roundabouts so if you don't see me you won't know that there's a need for me to be represented whether that be clothing you know, uh, well, yeah, mainly, 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 I said clothing, mainly clothing, um, the way you look, you know, your appearance, mm. just actors, actresses on the TV, why is there not more on the TV? Yeah. You know, so for me, it's a, it's a whole big bubble of see me, yeah. look, look, look at me, see what I need to enjoy my life in society, but also represent me. I think that's uh, that's so important. We we spoke a little bit before I press record on on um, sort of this whole thing about being seen out and about with a wheelchair. Because I yeah. when I was little, my granddad he also had MS uh, and he was in a wheelchair. So I grew up with thinking that a wheelchair that was great because that meant my granddad would come with me out and we would have I would get up on a little um, like an office chair. We would have races. You know, it was for me it was just like that was the cool granddad because he had wheels. You know, it was it was awesome. <laughs> this is it. This and is it. Think my kids daughter are... thinks it's great. Yeah, you know, 
And she said when she grows up, she wants a blue wheelchair, you know, and as much as I know within with, within your heart and within us, we, we want to all be able-bodied people. Yeah. I would like wheelchairs to not be seen as a negative thing. Yeah. You know, you're only going to cause yourself more harm to, to, to your mental state and your body if you refuse to use something that will help you go out and enjoy life. Yeah. And I think it's wonderful, you know, the likes of, you know, Mattel that have brought out the wheelchair Barbies and mm. and people that look different because we don't all look the same. That's yeah. humans. We don't all look the same. So I think it's wonderful that you grown up with with your grandfather who, you know, used to used a wheelchair and it was normal for, yeah. for you and not it was just normal. And so my daughter will grow up with, oh well, my mummy uses a wheelchair and she doesn't think anything about it. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like a, a big thing. Whereas other children, you know, they're all inquisitive and when I'm out and about and if especially if I'm in my electric wheelchair, like that's an amazing thing for them to see. Yeah. You know, they look and they, you know, I've heard little children go, Mummy, what well, what what's in what what's that? What what's that over there? Or oh mummy, look at her. Or you know, it's they're inquisitive, they want to know what I mean. Yeah. I don't mind if if a, if a little child comes up to me and wants to know about it and stuff, yeah. I'll tell them, you know, my leg doesn't particularly work well or whatever like that. So, yeah. you know, if we see more of it, maybe it just becomes more normal. I was recently in Florida. And the accessibility over there and how they are with disability is amazing. I know it's in a tourist attraction and I know obviously it's, it's lots and lots of people and lots of majority of the, the uh, community all together. But the amount of wheelchair users that I saw, the more I saw it, the more I thought, God, I feel just just so normal. I, mm. I, I don't feel like anyone's staring at me. I don't feel like anybody's thinking I'm weird or anything like that. It just was it just normal. And yeah. I would like to see that here. You know, the more I see it, the, the 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 better I will also feel. And for my own mental state to be thinking, well, do you know what? You're just getting on with your life and I'm just getting on with mine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Do you feel like the last few years, though, like you were saying about Barbie bringing out things and we see a little bit more, we're still not masses in the media, but that it has actually gotten better. Yes, I do. I, I I do think it has got better. Um, there's there's more things that are being seen on the TV. Um, I recently appeared on a TV show. Oh myself. yes, tell us about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a crazy thing that happened. Um, so yeah, I yeah I I, I appeared on Anson Deck Saturday Night Takeaway and. Um, and that was a bit of a random five minutes of fame. <laughs> but I'm a wheelchair user and I was on a show and it's on TV. Yeah. So it's lovely to see that this, you know, we we are actually being included in things. And it's that thing, it's inclusion, the fact that we still need to be included in society. Yeah. Um so yeah, again, it's like if I am not seen, I am not heard. So hello, <laughs> and it got quite a lot of media coverage as well. I've seen some articles about you. <laughs> Been a few in my local area. I, I yeah, I'm from Manchester, but I live in Fermanagh, um, which is Northern Ireland, and a Um So yeah, a few, a few, a few media um, platforms picked up on it. So yeah, um, it was it was brilliant and it was wonderful and such an incredible experience but there you go you know there's a wheelchair user on tv you know and just for all the wheelchair users to see it i'm sure it'll i'm sure it's comforting to see and i am yeah. seeing a bit more going on on the, on the tv and um there's more in the clothing industry that i can see so yeah. it just needs to just keep going it needs to not be a token it yeah. needs to be you know, so I, in the past, I've always felt it's always been a bit of a token gesture. Yeah. Um, and that was even before I've been using my wheelchair more. I've always mm-hmm. been conscious about it because obviously uh, the type of disability we have, we're very conscious of, you know, your legs not working properly and what you're going to need to get around and stuff like that. But 
yeah I've always thought oh disabilities always seems to be like a token gesture somewhere mm-hmm. well no I don't want to be a token gesture I want to be a member of society that is listened to heard and seen so get yourselves out there if you use a mobility aid and you're not giving in I always say this you are not giving in to mm-hmm. multiple sclerosis you are not you can fight and fight and fight and fight and I still fight and fight and fight but I have a condition that's not yet cured. So yeah. therefore, I'm just I'm just actually hurting my mental state if I refuse to do the things that or if I used if I refuse to use the things that will get me out and enjoy life. Yeah. I remember a few years back I interviewed a chap uh, who who was saying he used to sit, he used to look at his wheelchair and almost growl at it. And then when he actually finally realized that this wasn't his enemy, it was actually a friend that would sort of get him out of the house and get him doing things. I remember he was to take his daughter to dance training and they would have like a little boogie while he was in the wheelchair and she was dancing. And she just wanted to go out with her dad. You know, she just wanted to do stuff. But it was just that kind of overcoming the fact that this was not the enemy. It was actually an aid to help him. It's it do you is. have any, do you have any sort of tips on on how to make that shift because you you said that you felt that way before as well I I I did yeah because you know like I say everybody wants to be an able bodied mm-hmm. person but if you're struck down with a condition such as ours or anything similar then I feel for you to be happy within yourself you you need to be able to learn to adapt to a new way of of living and a new way of life so for me my tips really are accessorize your mobility aids to your outfits have fun with it enjoy yeah. it you know just just try it I'm not saying that the world is so easily accessible because that's the, that, that, that's the crux here. Again, mm. if I'm not seen out in my wheelchair, then establish, establishments are not going to change, but they need to change because you need to see me. Yeah. So let's all get, let, let's get out there. Let's save our bodies, prolong your happiness in this life and use whatever aid you need on that day that's mainly how I that's how I look at it because I don't want to sit inside and I don't want to mope and I don't want to I have suffered with depression and I don't want to go down that road yes things are challenging and and things are not always rosy all the time for me they're not you know I I do struggle with inaccessibility of places Hmm. but I'm making the effort and my daughter is enjoying her life because I'm doing my best. And again, for me, my motivation is my daughter as well, because I think I still want to be her mum. I still want to be the fun mum. I still want to get out. I still want to get to the park and stuff. So for me, those mobility aids come along. And actually, she likes the fact that I've got a wheelchair because all around Florida, as I was being wheeled around all the parks and everything, where was she? She was sat on my knee because oh. her legs were aching as well. So there you go. I have my uses. <laughs> With all the sort of social media and everything that you've been doing, and um, it seems like there's been quite a lot of positive things, but has there been any negative comments? The majority is a lot of love, in fairness, yes. But I have had negative comments about the fact that I'm a wheelchair user um, and the way that I look and the, the two have gone hand in hand because there was a colleague of my mother's who um, she used to work with uh, last year and I had gone for a <clears throat> a uh, tanning modelling shoot um, advertising false tan you know, I'm a false tan user, but I'm also a wheelchair user. So they were advertising me using the tan with my wheelchair. And my mum had told her work colleague about this. And this particular work colleague could not quite believe and was shocked and amazed about the fact that I was using fake tan and doing modelling. And she turned around and said to my mum, what does she want to use false tan for? She's in a wheelchair. And then very, very, very quickly retracted the comment because my mom was so upset and had 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 basically not so much questioned, but she then questioned her. But she knew this work colleague knew what the, she had said was so offensive, actually, mm. and so derogatory. 
Why wouldn't I want to wear false tan? Why wouldn't I want to make myself look nice? Yes, I'm a wheelchair user, but that shouldn't even come into it. No. I'm a woman that likes to look nice. Yeah. So why not? You are in a wheelchair, but you you, you have legs. And if you want to put tan on those legs, then what's that? Uh, if I want to make them look nice. I'll yeah. make them look nice. Yeah. Actually, I think I've got quite nice legs. I just It's just one of them doesn't work. <laughs> But one of them doesn't work properly, let's just say that. So, yes, why wouldn't I want to put mm. nice false tan on, on, on this body of mine that I still love, that I still am alive and existing? Why wouldn't I? It amazes me. Perceptions amaze me. You know, comments and comments. I know people mean well, but I've had comments in the past of, oh, it's lovely to see you out. Well done. You know, it's, it's great you're out. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just like yes I'm out yes I'm out yeah. yes thanks you know pray, be, being praised for doing my daily tasks is a bit weird but thanks but uh, people mean well yeah it's just it's a bit weird sometimes <laughs> that makes sense I've actually I've seen quite a lot of people who, who use wheelchairs to sort of talking about how people talk to them I know we yeah. had a story before uh, about a carer who said when he took his wife out he always sort of used to make a, a point of standing in a certain way so they would have to look at both of them because otherwise they were just looking at him and not talking to his wife a wheelchair doesn't make me inaudible and yeah. it doesn't make me unable to hear yeah it doesn't I'm still a human just sat down yeah oh, and we all sit down yeah yeah, you wouldn't talk to somebody different just because they were sitting down, would you? So no. it's just my chair. Remember, it's just a chair with wheels on. Yeah. That's it. That's all it is. Well, you were saying about modeling though. I, I I think there's been a lot of companies that actually do try to do much more diverse models now. I mean, it's growing up in the in the 90s where pretty much all models looked very much the same. It was very the yeah. same size that they look, you know. I feel like now when you look at things like I don't know, you go and look at a sports sports website or or anything yeah. like that, that there isn't just like the one look for people. So I feel like there is no, yeah. yeah. There is, it's, it's yeah, starting to change, um, but I think there needs to be far more. I don't yeah. know, you can always push it a little bit more because I think it's only just starting, really. Yeah. early days. Um, and it'd be nice to see more representation of every single body shape, form, type, it, you know, ability. It, it, they really, it really is because then that is my point. If I'm not seen, we're not heard. So we have to see everybody. Let's see everybody. We're not just one type of person um and that's how I am you know I'm that, 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 that's me and I've done a little bit of modeling and let's see if things can change you know for others out there and to feel represented because mm. I want to feel it during MS Awareness Week, uh, we're going to be talking a bit about sort of mental health and MS. And we did a recent big survey at the MS Trust um, where it was revealed that about 76% of the people who responded that changes to their mobility and walking had affected their mental health. Um, I, for you, when you're out and about, I mean, does that make you feel happier? Seems a little bit silly to say, but how, how does it sort of affect your mental health? When I'm out, gosh, mm. it's it's amazing. I feel no I know we shouldn't use the word normal because what's mm. normal? But I yeah. feel I feel me. I feel like Haley. I feel I feel great. I I love be I love socializing. I love getting out and about. I don't do it every single day. Some days you do want to just be at home and enjoy your own space and what have you. But um I feel lighter and I feel happier being out because being out and socializing with people releases all those happy endorphins yeah um locking yourself away is never a good idea um and I did do that in the past and my mental health did suffer because of it um I I really struggled I really struggled a lot with my mobility I was frustrated with my body I was frustrated at the fact that my leg gave up on me that my balance kept going that my fatigue just wouldn't let me mo mm -hmm. mobilize myself and then I just thought you know what why am I putting myself through this why am I cutting my own 
happiness short by not going out. So being out and about really does help your mental health. Did you, when you were struggling and sort of were still staying inside, did you ever reach out to anyone and sort of say, look, I'm struggling? Well, I, I had a bit of a breakdown. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of all got to a head, but it wasn't, if I'm honest, it wasn't just the fact that it was my mobility. It was mm. a lot of other health issues that were going on that kind of got me. Um, and family were my biggest support and my friends were my biggest support. I let it build up to a fact of, you know, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm fine, mm -hmm. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I know I'm fine. And then it just hit me, I'm like, no, I'm not fine, actually, no. And I did, I just let it all out, and I cried, and I just told everybody like it is. And and, and for me, telling my family, look, I, I'm struggling here with my mobility, please. Not that they were, but in my own head. I feel like members of my family were still expecting me mm. to carry on like I was a few years ago. You know, they do, they, 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 oh, you know, Haley, oh, you know, I don't want you being in a wheelchair and I don't want to see you in a wheelchair. I'm like, no, but, and this is like my grandma, you know, it's like, no, but grandma, my wheelchair helps me and everybody needs to understand this around me. Mm. So, for me, yeah, that 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 moment in time was okay. Stop being down about it. Let everybody know. Tell it like it is. Let everybody see that how upset and down I've been, and everybody now needs to see me, Haley, as a mobility aid user now, and carry on. Is there anything do you think that we as MS organisations? Um, now speaking of because we're kind of trying to work together during Emma's awareness week is there anything that we can do um to sort of try to to I don't want to say because you already said don't let's not use the word normalize but you know is there anything that we can help out with do you think to to, to make this less of a a stigma that's a job question because, yeah. oh, oh I don't know um, <laughs> because that's people fine. are all doing a great job anyway you know you all release you know, things in the media, um, you do things like this. So chatting to MS sufferers, you put me on the spot there. Like, oh, <laughs> so right. Well, it's good if we're doing a good job. <laughs> I think you are all doing oh, a good job. You're reaching out to everybody in the community, the fact that you connected with me via social media. Um, and social media is so powerful, you know, everything information everything out there is brilliant so keep doing that you know keep putting blogs out keep putting posts out um and represent everybody with multiple sclerosis in every mm. shape and form I think that's that's important for me because yeah. the thing that I that I actually get caught up about and I do get a bit upset about is as much as it's brilliant, and I am not going to take this away from anybody that has multiple sclerosis because you are doing the best you can do. But for me, sometimes when I see too much of the, oh, look what I've run today, you know, mm. I've run 10K or I've gone up this mountain or, you know, I'm doing this that marathon, this, that and the other. For me, sometimes as a wheelchair user and the way my condition affects me, that can really make me so upset because I beat myself up and want, you know, thinking, why can't I do that? Yeah. You know, so representing all the shapes and forms of multiple sclerosis across the board, I think will help a, a good number of people. And it's not to be negative to show, you know, somebody that is a wheelchair user, because I, I know there's people that are worse than me you know and that can sometimes upset me um but then I still remember that's your MS and I know my MS yeah. so I know what I need and you know what you need so representing everybody again it's this representation yeah. again it's it, it's showing it in it in its in all of its dynamic forms I think I the best thing I think it's so important. I mean, we've been talking so much to a lot of people recently about representation because it's it was very much like, well, when I was diagnosed, the only person I, I knew with MS was my granddad. So I sort of thought it was an older person's condition, you know, and you, yes, you were I diagnosed when you're yeah, a teenager. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's all 
and then predominantly before we saw white people, but we know that, you know, it could happen to anyone. They say yeah. that MS doesn't discriminate. Uh, and it's, it it's true, really, isn't it? It absolutely is. So that, yeah, you, you, it's representation in all shapes and forms of the condition for me. I, I like to see a good range. My final question, because I love the name of your account. And <laughs> clearly, I feel like we can all do with a bit more sass in our life. Oh, yes. <laughs> Have you got any tips just about like, how how do how, how can we all get a bit more sassy? <laughs> Pimp up your wheelchair for a start. Get your uh, mobility aid sorted first. Uh, and for me, I used to be a beauty therapist. Um, so throughout my working life, I was a beauty therapist. And I'm all about trying to keep myself looking well and healthy and et cetera. And sassiness to me is being happy with who you are and celebrating your body in all shapes and forms and I know it I don't want it to be vain but I do my hair I do my makeup my lashes my nails my tan all this stuff helps me to feel sassy like yeah that's that, as a woman that's all I want I want to feel a bit I want to feel sexy I want to feel feminine I want to feel all those things yeah so for anybody that wants to get more sass in your life look in the mirror think to yourself I love me, I love who I am, and wear what you want to wear, get out there and enjoy life, and be a queen or a king. <laughs> love it. Yeah, it, that's it. it. It's just making the most of what you can on the day, um, and wear whatever you want to wear that makes you feel happy. It's all about happiness, all that we want to be is happy. So if you want to wear crazy colours, go wear crazy colours. If you want to, you know, that's that's sassy that's being sassy that's owning who you are yeah I love that thank you so much for talking to me today this has been absolutely brilliant <laughs> thank oh you. lovely thanks Helena no it's been lovely for me I always enjoy talking Ooh.